Welcome back, everybody. Uh, we are now going to JJ. We're still here with JJ from yep. ASUS. Uh, we went through all of our board lineups, all of our feature discussions. Now we're actually going to demonstrate some of these features of the new uh, ASUS Z77 series of motherboards. Uh, there's quite a lot of features. We're not going to be able to touch on all of them uh, on the live stream. We're going to do some of the recorded section only as well. But I tell you what, what do you want to start out with talking about uh, one of the features that we spoke about earlier? Um, I think there's been a lot of questions about USB 3. So uh, okay. let's start with USB 3 boost. Okay. Okay. Um, so I think first off, it's important to uh, to kind of discuss a little bit what we have here in configuration parameters, because I think some people are confused as relative to how does this all work? What are the requirements for USB 3 boost and, mm -hmm. and how that might work depending on the controllers and things okay. like that, right? Um, so as we've talked about in the past before, for the Intel controller, right, we have bot protocol support, and then we have the turbo protocol support or SCSI support that we offer with an AI suite. Are those, are those two the same thing? Um, you it, guys are just calling it turbo and software? Yeah, exactly. We just call it turbo because we think it's a little bit easier to understand than SCSI, which a lot of people sure. might not understand the, the SCSI protocol operation mode. Um, so that won't require any type of specialized device. Okay. Um, any standard, essentially, USB 3 device, um, or even a USB 2 device, uh, definitely ones that are uh, flash-based or more susceptible, like flash drive and things like that, um, is going to have that option to be able to work in the bot mode or to work in the turbo mode. Okay. So no differential there. Uh, for the AS Media controller, um, same thing. It can support the bot protocol mode, the turbo protocol mode, but it also supports that new UASP mode. So for this pretense of this uh, demo here, we've got uh, Thermaltake's brand new Black X 5G enclosure. Okay. This enclosure has been updated to support um, the controller on a physical level and on a firmware level to enable UASP support. So that device that you connect to that port does have to essentially have a handshake um, that sends that information over that says, hey, I'm UASP compliant and I work on a UASP level. Okay. So... Uh, not all USB 3.0 devices are going to support that right now. And in fact, it's, we're probably just starting to get we're, into right that. Right now, yeah, we're just in the infancy of it, and okay. we'll definitely see it to continue to propagate because uh, Windows 8 has certified that UASP is native within the operating system. Uh, the cool part about what that means, though, is fundamentally that even our AI Suite 2 software, um, I love it, but let's say for whatever reason you don't want to use it and all you care about is USB 3.0 boost, mm -hmm. you'll inherently get the UASP operation natively if you're running Windows 8 because the okay. driver model is built into the OS on a low cool. level. So that's a that's a cool plus. So um, we've got the drive here. We've got uh, Corsair Force GT SSD hooked up. Uh, we're going to go ahead and show what the interface looks like and how it switches between the show two the modes. Show the software and how and, we enable and, it. Okay. Yeah, and then, of course, we're going to show the performance in terms of what we're looking at. Okay. So um, it'd be very simple. So first and foremost, we've gone ahead and first connected to the AS Media controller right now. So we're just going to go ahead and uh, open this guy up. AI Suite 2. Go to our Zoom. Oh, yeah. We're just going to enable the uh, magnifier here because of uh, that way we can see close up what we're looking at here since we're doing live streaming stuff. So we can see here, here's the AI Suite interface, and you can see already that we've designated the mode to be in UASP mode of operation. So if we go ahead and click on it, it uh, goes ahead and lets us know the name of our device, mm -hmm. and we see that we have two buttons. One is normal mode, so that's that bot protocol operating mode, okay. and then we have the UASP operating mode. And that's it. You're good to go. So all you would have to do is just click that button to keep it in UASP. Now, if you had a non-USP compliant device, mm -hmm. will, will this be normal and turbo? Correct. So yeah. it, if you have UASP, you don't have the option of normal turbo or UASP. Yeah. And, uh, it's just normal and UASP. Okay. Yeah. If we can fit maybe this drive in here. Let's see if we can fit this drive in. Doing stuff live, everybody. Yeah. You can see here now it's gone ahead and detected this other drive. Okay. So if we go ahead and click on it, you can see that this drive actually does not support UASP. So okay. So we have normal and turbo. Uh, but the firmware did handshake correctly to auto-sync it into turbo mode. Mm. Um, now, is that done by, uh, like, testing on your end? Yes. Uh, we do do work with validation on partners. Okay. Um, and we try so this won't necessarily automatically handshake yeah. it, I, I a, would, ra a random USB drive. Yeah. I would say it's probably going to be about maybe 65 to 75% of cases. It should auto-negotiate and shift automatically into turbo mode. But some firmware from some vendors and some controllers sometimes act a little bit off. Mm -hmm. So you might have to manually enable in that mode. Okay. Um, the cool part about that, though, is let's say go ahead and I'm done working with my device and I want to go ahead and remove it. So we're just going to go ahead. Normally, I always advise, excuse me, sorry about that. I always uh, recommend do safe removal so ah. that you minimize corrupting the partition table. But I know you guys probably <laughs> out there love to live wild and fast, so you guys just yank it. So uh, we're going to go ahead and just remove it. And, of course, it drives now disconnected. But if we go ahead and plug it back in, um, 
it stores a special information to keep the drive retained in that mode of operation. So it it will stay if you if you change it it will yeah. stay in that. So if we change this to normal, mm -hmm. unplugged it and plugged it back in, would it's it gonna, come back at normal? Um, actually, if it, it will keep reswitching back into that to the USB higher speed, mode. higher performance mode. Okay. Exactly. Okay. So we've tried to make it pretty pretty foolproof. Okay. Um, so that, that is a nice benefit in that regard. So that shows you how that works. And we'd pretty much seem the same thing. If we shift it over to the Intel, there's not going to be any difference. The only difference is even though this is a UASP compliant device, when I plug it into the Intel port, I'm only going to see the normal and the turbo as opposed to normal and UASP. Okay. Okay. So let's go ahead and uh, minimize this here. And we're going to take a look at some performance metrics. So the first part is just generally kind of USB 3 performance, right? Um, because, of course, everybody's going to have USB bot 3. normal yeah. stuff. Bot, okay. bot normal. So let's go ahead and just go from a very baseline perspective. Because I know that there's always a lot of questions where I think there's a perceived quality level, performance level to the adding controllers that get put on the board. But actually, from a bot standpoint, uh, the performance is pretty close to each other in reality. So let's go ahead and take a look at uh, the AS Media here in bot mode. Okay. And then we have the Intel in bot mode. Okay. So let's uh, go ahead and... Uh, Might have to undo magnifier. Yeah. Here, we're half gonna, and half. Yeah, we're going to have to drop this out here. Okay, so here we've got the uh, AS Media in bot mode. And we've got Intel in bot mode. Okay. And uh, if we zoom in on these, can we zoom in on these pictures just a little bit? Yeah. Just with the mouse cursor is fine. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and actual size it. So we can see that actually there's not too much of a delta here. The right. left hand side is, is Intel. The, is, the, is the Intel, which the right is going to perform a little bit faster because, of course, we have the native link to the PCH. Okay. But you can see that we're not really looking at that huge of a discrepancy between the two, right? I mean, sure. this is 225, 245, 172, 173. Q-depth performance, which is almost going to always be limited because um, bot protocol doesn't really support heavy Q-depths. Uh, actually, it doesn't support it at all and doesn't support me multiple reads and writes. But we can see that just in, from a sheer bot protocol mode, everything's pretty similar. No big changes. Okay, but great performance otherwise. Okay. Uh, but now what we want to look at is what happens when we start to change things up. Let's say if we run things in like turbo mode or UASP modes and let's see where our performance gains are at. So. On the first level, let's go ahead and take a look at the, the really high level. Um, so we're going to go ahead and take a look here at Intel, okay, um, in turbo mode. So give me one moment here. Looking for SCSI Force GT. Yeah, yeah uh, that should be, yes, that should be fine. Okay. And uh, is that visible? Do we need to mag try to mag magnify that? I'd zoom in a little bit. Just use the scroll wheel should be good. Okay. Well, It'll give us something. a little bit fuzzy. Is that okay there? Uh, a little, bit. little more. It's going to get a little bit fuzzy. That's all right. It'll be okay. Okay. So we can see here, um, in total, guys, at the top end, we're seeing about 353 to 354, about 350 in that range, okay, on the top end for write. And for read, we can see that we've gotten very good performance, all the way up to about 429, right? Mm -hmm. So this is really nice. That's a huge uptick, if which we were seeing before in comparison, right? Where actually, if we were to just check the standard uh, performance, we're not even over 300 megabytes. Um, so actually, this is going from normal to turbo. Correctly, normal on the Intel control. On the Intel control. Gotcha. So if we check that here, apples to apples here with the turbo, non-turbo, excuse me. You can see right here. We've got 278 and then 269. So this is a pretty big increase. Same exact system, same exact enclosure, high-speed storage device, and we've got a really big uptick in terms of the turbo performance. Okay. Now, one interesting thing that we've talked about is, is that we have some technology on the board and some tuning that we've done to help to extend DRAM performance. And uh, we had some conversations about this that actually... If you actually have higher speed memory equipped on your system, mm -hmm. you can even extend this performance more, especially with the USB 3.0 boost technology. So we can take a look at that metric and see how that plays out too. So th that's interesting. So a higher memory frequency Correct. on the Z77 chipset right. uh, will result in higher speed USB 3.0 performance through the Intel controller. It's through the Intel controller, that's correct. So if we go ahead and... Uh, Take a look here. And here we have, right, the SCSI. So still both in turbo mode, mm -hmm. but this one running at the default memory divider. 
So the right hand side is default memory speed. Correct. Okay. And here we're running an overclock DDR frequency. This one was 2400 okay. overclock memory frequency as opposed to the native divider hmm. that's supported by Sandy. So right speed sees a pretty bridge. significant performance jump going from 350 megs a second to about 410. 410, correct. You still saw a little bit of an uptick in read, not as much, not as but much, in but the yeah. right performance, it was a sizable increase. Very Definitely so. if you were writing to your disk, it would be a noticeable change. Even looking change. at like uh, the smaller... Uh, Q depths. Yep. So, yeah, talking. smaller transfer sizes. Smaller as well. transfer sizes. Yep. You're going from 9.1 to 9.7 megs. Yeah, and and we can see if we we're taking a look here in these these areas, right? 97 versus 61, 61. right? 158 50%. versus 100, right? You're mm -hmm. getting substantial increases. So normally, right, there's always kind of been that contemplation, well, why might it be justifiable to consider higher frequency memory? Mm -hmm. uh, for this generation with different things like this, potentially enhancing your USB 3 performance, as well as things like RAM caches, RAM disk, it's pretty cool. Um, so okay. any questions on that front? Okay, let's, let's go ahead and, and take a look at how it goes in comparison to AS Media with UASP because there's going to be some differences there. Okay. Okay. So this one we'll try to make it a little bit easier uh, in terms of viewing it. So if we take a look um, at UASP performance, I'll tell you right off the bat, the AS Media controller is actually going to be underneath the Intel controller in terms of peak sequential. Okay. And that's more so just a key limitation of the of the effective PCIe lane that's connected, as opposed to the, the PCH. The, the AS Media controller uses a BI1 PCI Express slot, correct, to communicate with the chipset. Whereas the P, the PCH is a direct link, direct so, link. so you have okay. more efficiency, uh, less overhead, so you get better performance. But keep in mind that the actual AS Media controller in UASP mode would operate faster than the Intel controller uh, in its bot mode. Um, so it's only the fact that we can actually even give you better performance with the turbo mode that we're really kind of giving you the best of both worlds, gotcha. right? But here is where it gets interesting. So we have Intel on this side with actually two different storage devices that we run because you're going to have different characteristics depending on the controller, the flash design, and the firmware. But we just want to show some variants here. Um, so we've got Intel set up where we have turbo mode enabled, so the fastest mode of operation set up right here. And then we have the AS Media controller on this end. And you can see that when we have multiple queues, mm -hmm. so you're accessing multiple files, read and writing multiple files, especially if you're working off the drive, doing things like that, the Intel controller, because it doesn't support that UASP, at least under Windows 7, mm -hmm. right, um, you can see that there's a substantial difference, right? So here we can see we've got 53, uh, we've got 140 versus... And where, what would be 74. a use case where you have a queue depth, where you're not just doing quick sequential type stuff. Is that work workflow environment? So if you have a 160 common... gig external SSD that mm -hmm. you connect through USB 3 that you'd maybe yep. do video editing off of. Or video, yeah, you're actually of. working off of that drive. You're actually writing multiple files to it. I know for me sometimes I like to read and write and copy at the same time. Sure. If you've ever tried to do that to a flash drive, you notice it really drops down the performance okay. um, because the bot protocol can't effectively try to manage that. And this even becomes more important later on in Windows 8 where I'm sure you've seen there's been changes to like the copy system. Right. Um, it's a lot more flexible to like pause or prioritize or yeah. do things like that. So UASP is going to really be advantaged, uh, an advantage in that. Okay. So more so it's really just about pick the controller and the performance mode that's going to work best for your usage model. So that gives you a little bit of idea relative to USB 3 boost and how it works on Intel's controller and how it works on our Atom controller. Okay. Okay. Be sure to check out PCPer.com for more reviews and information on everything PC hardware.